One of the most common questions asked in almost every sketchbook video, Jess, what do you do to protect your sketchbook pages from smudging, rubbing off on another page, and to last longer over the years? Well, in this video, I've got you covered with five ways to protect your sketchbook pages from not smudging and having your art last longer as the years go by. These have personally helped me as I continue to use these methods and I hope they will help you too. As someone who works in her sketchbooks practically every day as a part of my art practice, where I enjoy using a bunch of different mediums, graphite, paint, pencils, colored pencils, crayons, I kind of love mixed media. So it's important to have my pages protected as times go on. The ways that I discuss will mostly apply to graphite, pencils, and dry media in your sketchbooks. And I've used these methods on paintings as well when I gave it a go, and it worked out. Some of these you may or may not be familiar with, and even if they may be pretty obvious, I still thought to make a video about it to make sure I give you guys some tips and tricks on what's been working for me over the last few years of filling and keeping sketchbooks. With each method, I'll dive a little bit deeper and discuss what each one is made up of as that plays a huge role on longevity. I'll pretty much lay out some of the details for you for you to take it all in and gather a conclusion and see what works best for you. First up on the list is tracing paper. Mm -hmm. That's right. Here's a little scrap paper on what it looks like. And tracing paper, I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's used by artists, architects, designers, you name it. It's great for fashion design too, illustration, you can rework sketches. But sometimes I like to have it in the studio to also line my pages in my sketchbook with tracing paper. On this sketchbook, I pretty much lined every single page with tracing paper. This is my 100 heads and a bunch of challenges that I did. I worked in various mediums, graphite, watercolor, gouache, and I lined each page with some tracing paper. It's been a few years now and it's great. The reason why I love tracing paper is that it's slightly transparent you can still see a little bit of the art through, but that's not really that important for me. And you can just line it over the sketches and I found that it protects it really well. Plus, this is a great thing to have in the studio in case you want to use it for any other projects. And yeah, it's just an all-in-one versatile tool. I pretty much use this supply all the time. I personally like to buy them in pads and I like this brand, but you can really use anything. They are super affordable. I know I used to use Dollar Tree brand and I pretty much liked it for what it was, but now I just started to use Canson because I like that it's acid free, which is a term that we'll discuss in a second and it's super important. Whenever I cut down a tracing paper, I like to keep some scraps and just keep it for later use. No scraps go to waste. I like to keep them right in the pad. And since I work in different sizes, they always come in handy. Now let's quickly touch on acid-free versus not. You may notice on your sketchbook or notebooks, it'll say acid-free or 100% cotton, but basically it comes down to will it yellow or not. But of course, over a really long period of time. So since this sits on a shelf and it's not really exposed to a lot of light, it should do really well and shouldn't have any issues with fading. But if that's of concern, you can think about some of the options that I'll mention next. Two, let's talk about Fixative. Fixative is a clear spray that you can spray on top of your drawings to make a little sealant coat, kind of like an invisible layer that protects your artwork from smudging, flaking, damage. Basically, the Fixative preserves the dust and stabilizes it and just keeps it put, especially if you have a lot of graphite, a lot of charcoal, and things start flaking all over the place. So. Fixative is what artists use to seal a nice little coat on top of your drawings. You also may notice the label say workable fixative. This allows you to draw and work over the drawings once you actually seal them with workable fixative. So if that's something that's important to you, I highly recommend you make sure that the label says workable fixative on it. This is like a dry media sealant and it's similar to varnish if we're talking about oil painting or acrylic painting to get that nice coat on top of your paintings and seal it, protect it, and pretty much keep it safe. I highly recommend doing this in a really well ventilated area or taking it outside if you have a patio, balcony, or backyard. And definitely try it a few times before you truly commit to doing it over your final artwork. 
Personally, I don't use any fixative on any of my sketchbook pages. I have not had any issues with the methods of tracing paper or some of the ones that I'll mention next. However, I know many artists have used fixative and they love it. So just look into and maybe just do a little trial round for yourself and see if that one works well for you. My biggest tip ever if you're working on fixative or any coating like varnishing and spraying things onto your artwork, always do a test round. Get a little test scrap sheet and try it out on the side because yeah, it gets me a little nervous to do it right onto the artwork. So definitely recommend you give it a try on a test sheet. But I still wanted to mention it in the video in case that it can work really well for you. But yes, always do a test version you won't regret it. Let's talk about three, acetate paper. So acetate paper is actually clear. It looks like this. Very satisfying sound in my opinion. Acetate paper can be used for a variety of projects. It can be used for stencils. You can often see it like hold cakes together at bakeries. It is said to be made out of a type of plastic called cellulose acetate, which is derived from some sources from cotton and wood pulp. They actually sell a biodegradable acetate version in Jerry's Artarama. I'll have some links that you can check out if that's of concern to you. And most of the ones that I mentioned also come in pads and rolls. So yeah, it depends on how much product you're using. And it's sometimes easier to get the sheets, but also cheaper to get it in rolls. And you can just cut it up and do your own measurements of what your size of your sketchbook is of your artwork at home. Now the reason why acetate is really cool is that it's super clear. You can see right through it. I also like acetate for when I did really like thick collages with different mixed media because it actually keeps it flat and super protected. I really liked acetate for those specific projects. So I think depending on the medium, I will actually pick and choose which one I would line a certain sketchbook page with and then it keeps it nice and intact on the shelf. Before I go on to number four, I wanna take a quick moment and thank our wonderful sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Now, you can't put Squarespace inside your sketchbook, but you can put your sketchbook on your website, which Squarespace is the perfect place for you to start. With the help of this all-in-one platform, you can build your website it's super easy with a few drag and drops of images it's nicely displayed, seamless and beautiful, ready to go. Squarespace has award-winning templates that you can use. You can just select which one you love. I picked one that's super versatile for my website. I've been using Squarespace for so many years now. And you guys may know how much I love customizing it, how simple it is to use. That's my number one is how user-friendly it is. So if you're a beginner and you don't know where to start, I highly recommend you give this a try by going to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash jesscarp for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. My fourth recommendation is parchment paper. Yep, this stuff is the stuff you use to cook in the kitchen and bake, and it's basically a non-stick material and it doesn't stick to things. That's what it's known for. So anytime you're making pizza, it resists any of the crust to stay on the foil if you're using foil, but this actually resists it. And the reason why I'm mentioning it is if you live in a super warm place, I know that it's not as warm as it goes <laughs> inside the oven, but it actually can withstand a lot of heat. So this isn't actually known to use for art stuff, but it's a good little alternative if you want to give it a try. It is coated with silicone, which gives it that non-stick surface and also makes it heat resistant. In the oven, parchment paper is safe up to 425 degrees, I believe. It is actually not waterproof, so maybe the acetate option is something that you're looking for in case you think that for some odd reason your sketchbook will get soaked in water and maybe that will help protect it a little bit better. But the tracing paper and the parchment paper is great to just line your sketchbook pages with and you can cut it to size. So this specific parchment paper that I purchased is biodegradable. So you can pick out certain options for that. I like to keep my pages lined and I don't ever toss them or throw them out. They just kind of stay with the sketchbook. <laughs> so I don't really actually alternate them. They just kind of get put into that page and they stay there. Now, parchment paper is actually usually mistaken for glassine paper. They pretty much feel similar, but I love glassine paper. And that is my recommendation number five for today. Last but not least, Glassine paper is smooth, it's a little bit transparent, and it's pretty thin, 
It's also made from wood pulp, primarily aspen, oak trees, and gum trees. It's acid-free, pH neutral, and resistant to moisture, air, and grease. So it pretty much has all the factors of everything we need for this amazing method to work for your sketchbook pages. Glassine is actually a bit denser than standard paper, and it's often actually used in its translucent form to show what's beneath it. So you can actually use this in your art projects, maybe in some collages. But I personally also love, love, love to use this for my packaging equipment. Whenever I have my prints being shipped out, I can line it with some glassine paper. And I also have these little sheets for my stickers. I just put all the stickers in here and my largest sticker design doesn't surpass the size of this little glassine pouch. I love, love, love these guys and I purchase these in bulk and then I ship them out for my packaging. This is also a great tip if you're starting an online shop or you're packaging your artwork. You can get the rolls of glassine and cut them to size and roll them through your prints and that will protect your prints and your artwork as well. This works great for photography and paintings, fine art prints, you name it. Depending on the kind of sketchbook you use and the type of paper it has will also depend on how it soars and how it kind of rubs onto the other page. And of course, natural wearing and smudging and all the good stuff that comes with creating art and keeping a sketchbook will happen. And I personally don't mind, I love it, but just for that extra protection, whenever I'm keeping it on the shelves and just to preserve it a bit longer over the years, I like to line it with some of these methods. I've used tracing paper and glassing paper the most, and for certain ones, I also use the others. So I figured I'd finally give you guys some of these methods that have worked for me super well, and you guys can pick which one works well for you. I highly recommend giving them all a try. Try out some test papers, maybe give it a go and see what you love. I'm also curious if you have any recommendations. Drop them in the comments below. What do you do to protect your sketchbook pages? Feel free to share some tips and tricks and hacks, and let's continue to spread the knowledge out here in the art community. All of the articles and some really helpful tips will be in the description below and I really hope that you found this helpful. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you found this helpful and if you found this useful. Thumbs this video up, it's free and it really helps support the channel. So many cool things and videos coming up in the works, I cannot wait to share it with you all. If you want to keep on watching, I've got a tips video up on the screen right here. You can definitely find this one helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.